Good afternoon, everybody. We welcome you to this uh, teleconferencing session of uh, School of Management Studies. Uh, in this afternoon, we are going to have uh, two sessions. In the first session, we are going to discuss how uh, business environment is uh, different or new today, uh, in which we will be covering both uh, domestic as well as uh, international uh, environment and what is its impact on uh, business firms. In other words, how business is determined by these internal and external environments. You as uh, future managers, as you know, should have thorough understanding of the various aspects of this uh, uh, business environment. And uh, this presentation will uh, precisely uh, introduce you to those important aspects which you must uh, know and understand. Today we have uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Ram Upendradas from RIS, that is Research and Information Systems, New Delhi, as our resource person. Uh, now I request uh, Dr. Das to make his presentation. Thank you. Um, in today's world, as you know, uh, internationalization of business has become uh, um, very important because of the global integration process. But quite often than not, we do not have a comprehensive understanding of situating a firm's business operations both in the context of domestic economy and its interface with the international economy. And in this presentation, I would try to attempt to actually understand how to conduct business operations within the ambit of increased interaction between domestic economy and international economy. In so doing, there are three dimensions of new realities that I would like to highlight at the very outset. One is the very fact that when we think about domestic economic policy environment in which a business enterprise at the micro level has to operate, the international content of domestic economies has increased over the years and it is a common knowledge. Similarly, the presence of domestic players in the international economy has also increased, especially in the case of India in recent times. That is one dimension I just thought would be important to understand uh, when we think of conducting international business um, by any corporate or business uh, enterprise. The second dimension I wanted to make clear right in the beginning is that while the focus is to understand the business environment or international business environment for a micro level enterprise, it is important to know that the environment which is non-economic or non-business also influences business decisions and managers who are concerned with international business operations need to understand this as well. So a combination of understanding business determinants or economic environment, both domestic and international, combined with factors that actually influence the non-economic environment and the interface between economic and non-economic environment uh, would be important for any business operation at the micro level. And the third is that in a new world where increased global integration of our national economies has uh, compelled enterprises to think of new strategies to conduct businesses, to expand their businesses. There are two conflicting trends that appear to be simultaneously operating. One is the trend of competition, whether it is in the area of trade or finance or technology or even entrepreneurship. You see 
heightened competition in every area. But at the same time, this new world, which, ha which actually throws up new realities, also is characterized by a tendency of cooperation. Cooperation between enterprises, cooperation between countries, cooperation regionally, and also economic cooperation at the multilateral level. Therefore, these two seemingly opposite trends of increased competition and international economic cooperation also needs to be understood and my viewpoint is that they need not be understood in a conflicting manner. In fact, through cooperation one can increase one's competitive strengths and it is in this sense that I feel that these two opposing forces need to be blended to the advantage of any business enterprise at the micro level aiming at international business. Now having underlined these three new realities of increased international content of domestic economies, increased presence of our domestic players in international economy, the difference or interaction between economic and non-economic factors and the blending of competition with cooperation these new realities that I mentioned need to be understood separately in the domestic context, in the external context and situate the micro level business decisions uh, in these two internal and external contexts. If you also try to understand new realities of today, there are different facets that get unraveled. Number one, there have been sectoral shifts in different economies and more so in India and this needs to be highlighted because a lot of business operations actually try to conform to what happens at the macro level. You might be well aware that in terms of share in GDP today, agriculture sector's share is the least followed by manufacturing which is more than agriculture and the highest share is of the services sector in GDP. Now that's very important for any business decision at the micro level and these sectoral shifts from a very high share of agriculture in GDP at one point of time many decades ago to increased share of manufacturing to the share of GDP and now to increased or highest share of services to GDP has important implications for business operations which we will try to understand in due course. Second is the new realities have been facilitated and also at the same time determined by what is known as policy reforms aimed at liberalization in different dom domains of policy making process especially in a country like India. This liberalization has actually entailed liberalization of trade policies, liberalization of industrial policies, it has also entailed different nuanced shifts in the monetary policies and fiscal policies. There has been also a new way of looking at technology, so the science and technology policy. And these global, uh, these actually interact with what happened at the global uh, changing economic environment. And as a manager, you have to understand how domestic policy making process in different domains of trade, industry, uh, within industry, foreign direct investment, etc., actually interact with the global economic regime that gets evolved over a period of time. The new reality also entails that there has been a greater global interaction and we know that this global interaction is both technology driven as well as policy driven because there are various policies that have been evolved at the multilateral level and we need to understand that. I already mentioned about economic and non-economic factors. There are many economic factors that we will be touching upon, but in terms of non-economic factors, the 
political environment in an economy within our own country or the country which is your partner country for international business, the legal environment, the political environment in that country, uh, you know, actually falling under the domain of non-economic uh, factors, their interaction with the economic factors uh, are important for the success of any international business operation. Now, as I mentioned that these domestic economic reforms interact with global economic regimes and international business at the micro level needs to be situated in this context and therefore let us try and understand what all have happened in the domain of domestic economic policy reform in India. First, as I mentioned, there was trade reform process which was initiated in late 1970s which gathered momentum in middle of 1980s but the watershed was 1991 when wide ranging trade policy reforms were initiated. <coughs> this included delicensing of exports and imports because in the earlier regime if anybody wanted to import, the person had to go and obtain licenses. Sometimes those licenses were not available freely, so they used to be obtained in the black market and the licenses used to command premium in the black market. That was liberalized and that made the system more transparent, more predictable and did away with the rent-seeking activities of economic entities. Apart from delicensing, import licenses and export licenses, the regime of cash subsidies, what was known as cash compensatory support, was also abolished in 1991. Gradually, alongside, exchange rate policies were also reformed from state-determined exchange rate to pegged exchange rate to a basket of currencies, it moved on to a floating exchange rate of today whereby the exchange rate of rupee vis-a-vis -vis various international convertible currencies is determined by market and not by not non-market forces. These have allowed an influx of imports from various countries in our economy and one of the important effects of this policy has been increased competition which has led to increased efficiency in the manufacturing process in our country. This has also made quality an important issue. Therefore, when you define efficiency today, it is not merely allocative efficiency or technical efficiency in the textbookish sense. It actually gets manifested in high quality product available at lowest price. Now, apart from the effect of trade policy reforms on competition and efficiency in the manufacturing process itself, there were wide ranging delicensing measures taken within the ambit of industrial policy reforms and one of the highlights of industrial policy reforms was opening up of Indian economy for foreign direct investment. Gradually since 1991 especially our foreign direct investment policy has been liberalized. The kind of stringent requirements in terms of paperwork and uh, notifications and registration have been done away with and there are more and more sectors now included in the list of automatic approvals whereby somebody, a foreigner, can come to India for foreign direct investment project and what, what it has to do is to inform the, the regime that they want to set up this unit at this place and 
they do require an automatic approval but approval content of this process is less and automatic content of this process is more and this has again been a turning point in the Indian policy making process which has largely determined the economic environment in which international businesses get conducted because foreign direct investment provided an interface not only between finance capital of different countries but also entailed more of business organization import within our system alongside the FDI. It also helped upgrading our skill levels because of FDI inflows. The third aspect of domestic economic environment changing in recent times is in terms of connectivity and connectivity at different levels. Connectivity in the realm of transport especially the air transport linkage has increased between India and other countries. Connectivity in the realm of telecommunications, whether it is telephones or computer related internet interactions, these have improved connectivity. And as we all know, for the success of any international business, connectivity in the physical sense whereby people can interact with people from other parts of the world to know their consumers tastes and preferences to know the production processes to know more about technologies and designs and more intricate R&D efforts in other parts of the world helps in improving the quality of our product helps in imbibing better production and management techniques and finally helps us compete both domestically and internationally. So connectivity uh, through internet, ICT and also in the area of transport has been a new change especially in the Indian context which has provided a better interface with the global economic environment. Another dimension of uh, domestic economy which offers a new reality is in terms of availability of increased financial resources at a very cheap rate. At one point of time, Indian economy was actually resource scarce, financial resource scarce or capital is scarce. Today, we have billions and billions of dollars of foreign exchange reserves, which may have its own macroeconomic problems, but the short point is that availability of financial resources have increased and I would say that this has been a trajectory shift in the entire gamut of domestic economic uh, environment uh, of today. And this availability of financial resources obviously has been contributed by increased foreign direct investment and portfolio investments but it has also been due to the fact that the banking and financial sectors also opened up to the extent that there is an increased foreign presence in our banking sector and financial sector and these have led to availability of cheap financial resources. All this when I say does not mean that, it does, that these changes do not pose their own problems at the macroeconomic policy level but my focus is more to look at these changed or new realities from a managerial point of view when you conduct an international business. With that rider, I come back to again to, to an important point which is often made that in the era of reforms and globalization, one thing which also has been a determining factor in terms of increased output, increased competitiveness of production process, better quality products and that, that is available at cheaper prices which can find market worldwide is 
due to a variety of factors, but one of the factors which has really contributed to this process is changed industrial practices. And this is a very wide subject. It means changed industrial organization. It may mean different ways of conducting your business. It may mean different uh, innovative ways of managing your business. It may mean at the level of technology or engineering, the production process, how that gone over a shift in recent times. All these combine in terms of whether it is industrial organization or in terms of access to newer technology, in terms of increased R&D activities, in terms of product adaptation, in terms of technology assimilation, all, all these together actually get captured in changed industrial practices, which perhaps is a new reality in the Indian domestic context. And we must understand it threadbare uh, when we conduct any international business. The new era of our domestic economy also has shown both the merits of skill development, how human resources have emerged as a determinant of growth of a business enterprise. When we look at the literature, uh, the, the whole host of uh, industrial organization literature or new trade theories, new growth theories, uh, they have become more micro-oriented. They look at the domestic and international economic environment more from the point of view of a micro-enterprise and therefore micro-economic concepts are used in that and these theories have actually highlighted how a firm can compete in an international context by becoming more competitive by not only orienting its own production business managerial processes but also anticipating, anticipating the rival firms responses both domestically and abroad the Brander and Spencer, the Porter's theory, the new trade theory because of Krugman highlighting the econo economies of scale, product differentiation and how less than perfect market structure of oligopolistic nature or monopolistic competition have actually determined uh, success of a business enterprise whether in terms of total output or sales or even employment. And in this context, the theories and experiences worldwide actually demonstrate that it is the human resource which is actually a capital, defined as human capital, along with the physical capital and knowledge capital. The trinity of these three capitals actually determine a firm's success, especially in the international context. And it was with this reason that I thought skill development <coughs> importance uh, in, in, in this context needs to be highlighted. In the domestic context, there is one more aspect which, is both e which has both economic and non-economic implications. And that is that if you look at the, in the business enterprises in the Indian context and compare them between now and two or three decades earlier, you would find that the aspirations of Indian businesses have also undergone a trajectory shift. When I say aspirations, it is aspiration to excel in an environment where you can actually excel. There was a time when to just to increase your plant size, it was not possible for a business enterprise to do so on its own because of various regulations and requirements by the government. Now the change role of government from active producer to more of a facilitator has actually engendered a series of aspirations in entrepreneur class in India which not only can aspire for but also execute to the, int to the best of uh, 
interest of both its own micro level aspirations as well as contribute to the national economic macroeconomic goals of employment generation income generation foreign exchange earnings etc and as i said that today even domestically and also in international context it is more important that quality and price both together have assumed a new role and the usual traditional notion that it is the price competitiveness alone which determines success of a micro enterprise is no more true so these were some of the dimensions that i thought would be useful to understand that have undergone a trajectory shift in and <coughs> posed a new reality in the domestic sense in the international uh, economy also there are new realities and because the external sector has assumed more importance in our day to day uh, business operations domestically and because the whole emphasis is to understand socio economic environment uh, in 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 the context of conducting industrial business uh, international business it is important to know what all things have happened in the context of external economic environment number 1 the developed world which used to be the engine of trade and growth and output is no longer serving that role it is the developing world today which has assumed more important role in shaping and determining glo global gdp and trade second is within the developing world asia has emerged as a new economic center we know the predominance of us and after the formation of european union the two poles of global economy how important they have been but the new reality is that the third pole that is asia has emerged as a new economic center and the center of gravity of this century is expected to shift towards asia and asia is considered to be providing the locomotive role for global gdp and trade what has also happened is that more and more developing countries have actually transformed their economies barring a few but more so in asia from an agrarian economy to manufacturing to services a point which i mentioned earlier but it has to be seen in an international context as well export orientation is another important feature and why i am highlighting specifically this apart from many other features of external economic environment is that it is this export orientation which has generated a fight or a trade war among nations and because of which the world trade organization wto talks actually are failing it is the export orientation which compels countries to seek greater market access in other countries without reciprocity without making reciprocal gesture to open their own market now there is a fallacy in this because every country becoming export oriented and seeking market access in the partner country but resisting to offer market access in its own country would obviously lead to a situation of stalemate because not all countries can be export oriented because to for one country to be exporting another country has to be an importing country therefore a wrong understanding of export orientation when all countries over emphasized this dimension is causing certain problems in the external economic environment and business managers operating in an international context must realize this that while it sounds very fashionable and interesting and international economic environment has opened up plethora of opportunities it is not easy because other countries resist offering market access and that brings me to the other point of global trading regime which is being shaped by these aspirations of both developed and developing countries but the deadlock is precisely because everybody wants to seek greater market access and does not want to offer as much market access as being asked 
it is for this reason and also for an economics of its own that countries are looking at more towards bilateral or regional trade and economic cooperation rather than having a multilateral global trade discipline. And as managers, we must understand that it might be easier to do a business with Sri Lanka in a neighboring country in Thailand than to do business with all the countries of the world under the rules set at the multilateral level. And because this route of, uh, of bilateralism and regional economic cooperation has been found to be much speedier, also with adequate safeguards, more and more companies worldwide are actually forging links in a regional context. And the whole concept of regional production networking, intra-regional cross-investments, technology transfer to geographically proximate countries because of suitability or appropriateness of technologies, skills being similar uh, in geographically proximate economies, the whole economics of geography has actually led to shaping up of the external economic environment in a way that the whole world is getting segmented in small pockets of prosperity because of the small pockets of liberal trade and investment and economic regimes and we should be aware of this and try to take advantage of this as business managers. Therefore, when we talk of international business, we should not think international always. International may be defined as simply bilateral or regional and not necessarily global. And therefore, the whole concept of multinational is likely to undergo a change. Multinational, earlier they used to be understood as a company or a corporation having subsidiaries in a whole host of countries with a global presence. But in this new reality of changing external economic environment where bilateralism and regionalism is proliferating, the whole concept of MNCs or mul multinational companies could be just the same, but the number of countries where a multinational company may be having operations may not be more than two or three and we need to understand this and it was with this that the need to forge strategic partnerships economically whether it is in the form of subsidiaries, joint ventures or uh, mergers and acquisitions or export and import linkages or technology cooperation or in services the BPOs and things like that. The, the whole importance of strategic partnerships have assumed new meaning because these strategic partnerships are nothing but getting localized at the bilateral and regional level rather than being truly international. So this brings me to just summarizing what we have said. When we try to do or conduct international business, we need to understand what is happening at the global level, the global trade and economic regime, their changes or lack of changes at the global level. We need to understand that. We should understand what is happening between, say for instance, India and other countries at the bilateral and regional level or sometimes sub-regional levels. We should also understand what is happening at the national level when we are interacting at the bilateral or regional level and it is in this context that I would like to highlight that the kind of free trade agreements that India has signed within our own South Asian region with Nepal, with Bhutan, Sri Lanka, with Thailand, the negotiations that are on with ASEAN, 10 countries, the whole the India-Singapore Comprehensive Economic Cooperation Agreement which has already been signed and a whole host of other 
initiatives in which India is presently engaged at different levels of talks or negotiations that have to be understood because they entail certain trade and economic policy measures that need to be understood in a very nuanced way to conduct international business in these contexts. On top of this, we need to understand the industrial ambience of our own country. It's not that when India enters into a bilateral or regional framework or free trade agreements that are trade they, that cover trade and economic dimensions, it is not that only India is going to gain. In this process, India also offers market access to other countries, which actually may put our own business enterprises within the country at a disadvantage and therefore adequate measures have to be devised and understood and implemented accordingly. When foreign direct investment increases because of our international cooperation, we need to understand what they mean for our inter in in internal business operations. What kind of firm level corporate strategies will have to be devised in this context have to be understood and also in this context there are different set segment wise targets that need to be set to take advantage of the agreements that are getting evolved and they are determining the economic environment both within our country and also with our partner countries and when I say that the segment wise targets that have to be set this is something new these targets will have to be very different from mere sales targets or output targets. These targets will have to be more social, more value based targets because it is the new social corporate responsibility. There are so many big companies that are actually looking up to finding businesses where others don't trade. Just to give a small example, businesses today are entering in areas where there no, may not be very high returns. But what is the intention when international business operations are actually conducted in areas which are not high return yielding? The intention is to get into areas and take advantage of an early mover or, or the first mover advantage and capitalize on that. There are industrial organizations that have, for instance, made poverty as an opportunity. So to go to rural areas, try to establish your business operations and cater to impoverished sections of the society by also employing them into your business strategies actually have provided businesses to think new and the new thinking is this that when you employ poor people they get employment through which they generate income and then you produce what they can consume so you produce mass consumption products which can be sold at a lower price but when you produce those products with the help of those who are poor and by making them employed you are also creating demand for your products and it is in this sense that these new strategies are actually getting evolved and corporates are actually not only marketing this as a as a part of their social corporate responsibility but also trying to make a business out of poverty if I may say. So poverty which is a macroeconomic challenge or a development challenge in a country like India needs to be tackled. But the time has come when international business operations can perhaps be directed towards tackling poverty and that can be marketed as a part of 
corporate social responsibility but it's a wonderful business proposition that you employ people so that they can have income and that income is demand generating and what you are doing in the process is you are actually producing what they can possibly consume and it is in this sense that we feel that the international business situated in a new domestic reality and also situated in a new international context of increased bilateral and regional economic cooperation can have different targets for their businesses and here targets mean different segments being targeted and different sections of society at different levels of income or lack of income become the target and those different segments being different targets offer new vistas of businesses both domestically and internationally. I think with this I will conclude. Thank you for your kind attention. Okay. Thank you Dr. Das uh, for the lucid presentation and uh, you have uh, covered uh, the business environment starting from the global level coming to the domestic then local in a very um, easy manner. It's very useful for the students and where uh, you have mentioned about the transformation of the economy from the agrarian to the manufacturing then coming to services how the export orientation has to change and how the aspirations are growing uh, in today's world. Uh, all these aspects you have covered very well and thank you once again for the uh, lucid presentation. With this we come to the close of this uh, session. The next session will start at uh, exactly 3.30 uh, where we will focus mainly on a specific topic related to business environment. Till then you stand by the studios. Thank you.